speak at this church. Um, I haven't been invited back to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, anywho, it was a weekend on the subject we did on the subject of revival, you might remember some of you. But during that time, I had the real sense, the real sense, I, I believe from the Lord at that time, that this church was to have exciting new times ahead of it. And I think it was fair to say at that time, uh, this church had been going through some difficult and testing times and yet I've really felt, you know, the Lord's hand is upon this, this fellowship, this, this church and there are exciting times ahead and that you would see an increase in people attending and that more importantly a deepening sense of community and an increasing passion for the Lord. All these things I genuinely uh, must have mentioned it to somebody at the time. Uh, I genuinely felt this is what the Lord is is uh, going to do here in the next chapter of uh, of your life as a as a church. And at the time that we had that conference, uh, Dave and Pam, I think you were in, in the UK at the time, but yeah. uh, you were. <laughs> pastors here and, and uh, John and Jan were, were pastoring uh, as well. They were all in leadership. Since then, John and Jan have stepped down in leadership and today Dave and Pam do as well. And much has changed. And today sees the start of a new chapter as Phil ably, ably helped by Liz and the new leadership team. I was meeting uh, with them just yesterday afternoon, wonderful team. Phil steps forward to take up the role of pastor. Crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great job. <laughs> now this is not an overnight decision uh, by Phil, of course. Uh, just as this moment is not arrived at lightly. And we're told in 1 Timothy 5.22 that never be in a hurry about appointing a church leader. Don't do it lightly, don't do it hurriedly. This is a, an important moment. And after an unhurried and an honest seeking of the Lord over this, I can, I can really say that the, the leadership team here at Living Water, uh, supported by, by, by Dave and Pam in this, by, by Ian and Pat as well, have sent the anointing of God on Phil for this role. So we're going to lay hands on him this morning and in the presence of God, ordain him to the position of pastor of Living Water Church. It's important that we do this. It's God's calling, but it's our agreement together. It seems good to us and to the Holy Spirit. And so everyone's going to be called upon here to support Phil and actually to support Phil and Liz as a couple yeah. as well. To encourage them, to pray for them, to enable Phil to lead this church along with the, the leadership team, to lead it well by everyone pulling together, by rowing together. So I'm going to ask Ian to come and uh, set the charge over, it sounds kind of like yes. more by executioner, doesn't it? <laughs> it's better than that. <laughs> to set the charge over Phil and over the congregation as well. So, Philip John Cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't know his middle name was John, did you? I like people whose middle name is John because my middle name is John. Uh, I'm going to put the charge to you. You've seen all this, you've agreed to it, Philip. And uh, I'm going to just say this to you. Seeing we're about to ordain you as pastor of this fellowship and that you have been called by God to this ministry, I have to ask you in His name do you believe in the one God, Father? Son and Holy Spirit and do you confess Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? Yes I do. You heard that? <laughs> so I'm going to put the charge, it's really from the scripture, Paul to Timothy, Paul to Titus, but from Peter. 
And I charge you today, Philip, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. I charge you, man of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Lay hold on eternal life to which you are called. I charge you, Philip, be strong in the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Be diligent to present yourself to God as a workman that does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, and it does happen, knowing that they generate strife. The servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, to be able to teach and to be patient. A shepherd must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine. Well, a little's all right. <laughs> Don't go wishy-washy now. <laughs> <laughs> not violent, not greedy for money, hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as you have been taught. I charge you, Philip, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Take care of them, yes. serving as a shepherd, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be an example to the flock. Clothe yourself with humility, because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I have to ask you, Philip, do you accept these charges? With God's help. With God's help. Nice and With God's help. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're going to anoint Phil for this for this role. Phil, I anoint you with oil. I anoint your eyes. I anoint your ears. I anoint your lips. I anoint, oh sorry, your feet. <laughs> your eyes to see only what God wants you to see. Your ears to hear clearly the voice of the Lord and to be able to distinguish from the voice of man. Your lips to speak only what God wants you to speak Amen. and your feet to walk worthy of your calling. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of our hands. For the spirit that God gives us does not make us timid, mm -hmm. but gives us power, love, mm -hmm. and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. Phil, 
may you be filled with the with power, with love, and with self discipline. May you fan into flames the gifts of God imparted to you through the Holy Spirit and the laying on of hands. Make you a charge to the church. Now, folks, it's important that uh, I put a charge to you as a church. And I'd like you to stand, please. And I charge you, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, or one translation says groaning, not with grief or groaning, for that would be unprofitable to you. The church in Thessalonica was given a charge by Paul, and I want to put a similar charge to you all today. I beseech or charge you to acknowledge those who labour among you, who are appointed over you in the Lord, and instruct you in the Lord, esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake, and be at peace amongst yourselves. When a man is called a, a spiritual leader, as Phil is today, he's going to be labouring among you, and when he is fulfilling his ministry, you have certain responsibilities as a church. Recognise him as your leader, as I'm sure you do today, and follow him. Phil will be labouring among you and has been given this day spiritual authority before God and before you. Get to know him. Seek to understand where he is coming from. Don't be quick to run to judgment. Paul charges the church in Thessalonica to do this with respect to those over them in the Lord. And I charge you today to do the same towards Philip. Respect him, love him, pray for him, and live. Every day, ask God to watch over him and keep him from falling and to give him the necessary knowledge and wisdom that he requires to lead you. Esteem him highly in love. Look to him for spiritual guidance. Submit to his leadership in love, for in that way you will be honouring God and his words. And as Paul said, be at peace amongst yourselves. Peace comes when you submit to the God-appointed authority set in over you. For the faithful pastor it means submitting to the Holy Spirit's guidance and for you as a church submitting to the faithful pastor over you. Never cease to pray for him. Never cease to recognize him. Never cease to esteem in your esteem for him. That will bring peace. And you know what happens when a church is at peace? Growth comes. So I have to ask you, and I want you to reply when I put this last bit to you. With God's help, we will accept these charges. I ask you, will you as a church, fellowship, living water in Mohaka, accept these charges put to you today? And will you commit to pray for Philip, to esteem him, to recognize him, and to follow him as he follows the Lord? In his, in his calling. Will you submit to his authority and guidance as you together seek the Lord's will for living water fellowship? Will you accept these charges? With God's help, we will accept these charges. Amen. So just finally, I'd, I'd really uh, love the, the leadership team that um, there is here in uh, Living Water Church to come and gather around um, Phil for just a moment and lay hands on him and we're going to just finally pray for him. What would be a great idea, I think, if, if, if somebody, probably time being what it is, 
just, just one person from the leadership team. If you'd just like on behalf of, of everybody to pray for, for Phil. Lord, do lift Phil up to you, Lord. Um, he's your chosen servant, Lord, for this building here, Lord, this establishment, Lord. But this establishment, Lord, doesn't end up having bricks and mortar all around it, Lord. It stretches, Lord, to each and every individual's houses here, Lord, and each individual country they live in, Lord. His ministry is going to be worldwide, Lord Jesus, because of the nature of this establishment here, Lord, which is yours, Lord. I feel is your servant, Lord. And we lift you up, him up to you right now, Lord, and we lift you up to him to take hold of him, Lord, to nurse him, Lord, to, to accomplish your arms around him, to keep him protected, Lord. As we know, it's a hard position, Lord, and it's going to have many darts thrown at him, Lord Jesus. That we pray that any darts will miss, Lord, that will be inaccurate and hit the wall rather than fill, Lord. And above all, Lord, we pray for that shield right in front of Phil, Lord, that shield of the Lord Jesus Christ, to stand in front of him, Lord, and bring your protection to him. So we do lift Phil up, Lord. We lift Liz up too, Lord, because yeah. they both are united together, Lord. They're bonded together in you, Lord Jesus. And we pray for a unity, Lord, an understanding, Lord Jesus, a deeper understanding in this time, Lord Jesus. But above all, we just pray for your presence within both of them, Lord Jesus, today, tomorrow, Lord, and forever from this day forward. Amen. 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 Yes. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to fill. Amen. Fill him with the grace and power, and make him a pastor yes. in your church. May he boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation, and may he be a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counsellor. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.